In this training video, we will learn the following about processing and posting accounts payable invoices. How to properly fill out the session information line. What to use for the invoice number field. 1099 coding and how it is defined. How to code the expense line properly. What to enter in the transaction description line and how to run an unposted transaction report and post the session. First, you will need to enter accounts payable invoices by clicking on transactions on the navigation toolbar and then on invoices under the accounts payable heading. Next, you need to enter the session information. For accounts payable invoices, we recommend beginning the session ID using AP, which represents accounts payable, and then the two digit year month, and day. Any other designation may be added to the end as you deem necessary. Labeling session IDs this way will naturally sort your session IDs in date order and by transaction type. Leave the session status as batch to post. This will allow you to review and edit the transaction before posting, and also will allow you to include these transactions on various reports such as the normal trial balance expanded general ledger, and statement of revenues and expenditures. We recommend you leave the description blank as it will be more efficient. The session description defaults to the document description and you will have to delete it or replace it with the correct invoice description. Leave the session date as is. Click Start to access the document information and begin the invoice entry process. In the Invoice Document ID field, Enter the invoice number provided by the vendor, or create your own invoice number. Invoice numbers must be unique within a given session. When an invoice number is not provided by the vendor, we recommend using the two-digit year, month, day format and a piece of the vendor name. Usually, the first three letters or an abbreviation of the vendor name is sufficient to keep the invoice number unique. For invoices that are only processed once a month, we recommend using the two-digit year and month followed by the first three letters of the vendor name for each invoice. Creating session IDs and document numbers in this manner will assure that they will naturally sort by session ID and then by document or invoice number within each respective session. In the next field, you will enter the date of the invoice which is provided by the vendor. Later you will be able to run the Accounts Payable Aging Report using either the Invoice Date or the Due Date. Press the Tab key to move to the next field and enter the document description. This description will appear on the check stub and relates to the overall document. You will then enter the total amount of the invoice that will be charged to the Accounts Payable account. Press the Tab key or click in the Amount field and enter in the total amount. Next, you will select the vendor by either keying in the first part of the vendor ID or by selecting it from the drop-down menu. If your desired vendor does not appear in the drop-down list, you will need to enter in a new vendor. If you are entering in a new vendor, please see the Vendor Setup Training video, VEN01. After you select a vendor, the system will automatically generate a due date. The due date is calculated by taking the invoice date and adding the number of days in the term field within the vendor's record. For example, if a vendor has 30 day terms, then 30 days will be added to the invoice date to determine the net due date for the invoice. The vendor address will default to the main address defined in the vendor file. However, if needed, the system allows you to have multiple vendor addresses. Please see the Vendor Setup Training video, VEN01, which will show you how to enter and manage multiple vendor addresses. If a vendor is marked as a 1099 vendor in the Vendor Master file, the 1099 type field will be populated with information as defined in the vendor file. If the vendor is not marked as a 1099 type, the 1099 type will be grayed out and you can move on to the next step. We now begin the actual coding for the invoice. This can be done by either using the drop down menu or by keying in the first part of the code for each segment in your chart of accounts. First, 
click in the fund segment to enter the expense or the non-accounts payable account. When you begin entering the segment codes, you may notice that the general ledger segment automatically populates with an account number. If this occurs, it simply means that a default general ledger account has been set up for the vendor file. The expense coding may default from the vendor file if it is established. For more information on establishing default coding in the vendor file, see the Vendor Setup Training video, VEN01. To code the 1099 box correctly, you need to choose the 1099 box number from the drop-down menu you entered when creating the vendor account. When entering expenses, each segment needs to be populated. All of the entries that you will be making will be of an N or normal entry type. If you believe you need to use a different entry type, please contact the McGovern Consulting Group. Always remember the effective date is the most important date in the system. This date defines the period in which the expense and accounts payable activity will appear. Always double check to make sure the date is correct so your financial reports will be accurate. The final step in completing the entry is to add a transaction description. The transaction description will automatically default from the document description at the top of the screen. Be as specific as possible. This will keep you from having to go back to pull the original invoice from the filing cabinet to review the details. After you have completed the entry, click Apply Offsets to balance the transaction to the accounts payable account. If an error message appears that the account offset cannot be found, you can key in the second line to manually balance the transaction totals to accounts payable. Please refer to the Setting Up Offsets training video, STP40, to learn how to set up offset account assignments. After all the data is entered and you are ready to save the document, the system performs several checks before the document can be saved. First, it will check to determine if it is balanced by effective date, then by fund. Entry types are valid based off of the effective date being used. The document amount will equal transaction amounts, and debits must equal credits. When these are all valid, you can save your document by clicking on the Save and New button. Repeat this process until all of your invoices are in. You may then review the unposted transaction reports or post the session. Once all of your entries are in, you are ready to move on. To run a report for your unposted transactions, click on Reports on the navigation bar. Scroll down to Transactions and click, and then click on Unposted General Ledger Transactions. To learn more about unposted transaction report setup and running reports, see the Unposted Reports training video, RPT01. After you have run your reports and determined that adjustments need to be made or if additional items need to be added, you may do so up until the time that the session is posted. To make edits or additional entries to an existing session, go back to Transactions on the navigation menu and click Invoices below the Accounts Payable heading. Find the original session in the list and double-click the session ID to access the information in that session. Note that only unposted sessions will appear in this list. Once a session is posted, it will no longer appear in the list, and if corrections need to be made, it will require a correcting entry. Please see the Correcting Transactions training video, API 100, on how to correct an accounts payable invoice. After all edits or additional entries are entered, you are ready to post the session to make it a permanent record within the system. To post a session, click the Transactions tab on the Navigation toolbar, and then on Invoices below the Accounts Payable header. This will return you to the list of unposted sessions. In the list of unposted sessions, click the box next to the session you are posting. Once the session is chosen, click on the Post button to post that session. To recap this training video on accounts payable invoices, you should have learned how to properly fill out the session information line, what to use for the invoice number field, 
1099 coding and how it is defined based on the vendor. How to code the expense line properly. What to enter in for the transaction description. And how to run an unposted transaction report and post the session. True North Training. Never feel lost again.